gorgeous plant people. Welcome back to Reading Mindfully. My name is Yana, and today we are talking my favorite plants of 2021. So if you're interested in seeing what my top favorite plants are for the year, then stay tuned. Hey guys, like I said, so today we are talking my top favorite my top five favorite plants for the whole year. Now, this was kind of hard, picking five plants out of my whole collection, but if I had to choose plants that were just my favorite plants of, of like all year, it would definitely have to be these five. You, probably, you guys can probably guess which plants they are because they're plants that I talk about the most in my collection. And the first plant is my ficus teneki or my rubber tree. And the reason why this is one of my favorite plants of all time is just because it is just such a beautiful plant. It's just structurally beautiful. I love the shape of the leaves and the water coloring that you get on the leaves. They always have the water coloring comes in different on every leaf. So it's always nice to see what kind of variegation you'll get as well as the more light that you give it, the more variegation you get and so on, as well as the more light you give it, you also get bigger leaves. So I just love having the rubber tree in my collection, especially the Teneki. It never lets me down. It is definitely one of my ride or die plants and one of the plants that does the best when I put it outside and it just soaks up all the sun and you can just tell it really enjoys it. And so this plant just also makes me feel like a really good uh, plant parent. And so, yeah, that's why it's one of my top favorite plants of the year. Now, the second plant that is one of my favorite plants of this year is my Philodendron McDowell. And the reason why this plant is my top five is because this used to be one of my biggest statement plants in my collection. It was just the most beautiful plant. And then it just got viciously attacked by spider mites. Now you guys watched me chop this plant all the way back to the stumps in my plant transformation series. And if I'm being honest, I kinda wasn't sure if that plant was gonna come back or not. And I was kind of nervous, but at the same time, I felt like I knew what I was doing. But I was just kind of experimenting with cutting up the stems, placing it on the soil, and I just prayed that <laughs> the plant was going to come back. And so I'm going to put in some pictures of what the plant looks like now. But it is coming back, and it just looks so cute with its little leaves. And I just can't wait to put it outside so that way it can get even bigger leaves. I'm also really excited for this one because when I did chop it up and I put it in separate or different directions in the pot, it created even more growth points than I had before. If you guys watched my previous videos, it just had one long stem and so the leaves were just growing along one stem and it was hitting the edge of the pot. And so when I chopped it up, I put them in different directions. And so now I have several growth points and they're kind, they're kind of growing in a circle. And so when that plant does grow back fully, it'll be an even bigger, fuller plant. And so I'm really excited to see how that's going to look. So that's why that one's on my top five. I'm also kind of dreading that one because <laughs> I know that one's going to take up the most space. And so... We'll see what that happens with that one, but I'm still looking forward to the growth of that one. The next plant on my top five is my Australian tree fern. And this just is just a beautiful fern. It is definitely one of my favorite ferns in my collection. And I just love how the fiddleheads come out. They look like unfurling like caterpillars and then they're so they start out so tiny and then they just develop into these beautiful fronds now i cannot wait until this plant gets really big if you see them in the wild they're like prehistoric like huge prehistoric trees and that's what i want mine to look like well <laughs> maybe not that big but i don't think it could even get that big indoors but i do put this outside and it really enjoys it I got a lot of these fronds when I put it outside actually. And so this plant really enjoys my home, really likes being outside. Now this one is definitely a thirsty plant. I think I'm, um, I'm watering it about 
every day or every other day so I do have to monitor that but other than that it's a really easy going plant you just have to make sure you keep it moist and so right after this video I will be watering it but yeah this is just it's always going to be one of my favorite plants and it's also one of my favorite plants because the shocking thing is that when I saw this at the nursery I really didn't know what it was I just knew it was a really cool plant and I got it for six bucks so I got one and my mom ended up getting two but we got these for six dollars and then we ended up seeing them at the terrain in a much bigger size and that one was going for about a hundred plus dollars maybe two hundred dollars so I was really excited that I only got this one for six bucks and for six bucks this was just a really good purchase and so yeah my Australian tree fern and so the next plant is another plant that I have been talking about a lot lately and this is my Maranta silver band now this is definitely one of my favorite Marantas if not my favorite Maranta and it's so hard because all my Marantas are doing so well and they're all kind of my favorites and it was so, so hard to choose one but I think this one would be my favorite Maranta and it is just so gorgeous if you see that and you can see that I'm really getting the dark shading on the leaves it's just really beautiful and then it's got that beautiful purple backing but this plant I so I heard I watched other people's videos on this plant and it was reported that this plant was a slower grower and was really finicky but I had no issues with this plant at all now at first when I did get it it wasn't growing as much and then when it did start growing it was putting out these tiny leaves like that one but as soon as I put it under my Soltec light it started putting out these really nice sized leaves with the increased um, coloring on them and so now this thing this plant is just growing very fast uh, I've got new growth coming here there um, down in there it's just constantly putting out new growth and i think if it's, it's even blooming now so that's really cool i haven't had any of my marantas bloom yet and so i'm really excited to see that it to see it bloom now i know the blooms aren't very significant but why i like blooms is because it lets me know that the plant is happy i mean i can really tell that the plant is happy be the way because of the way it's growing but it's just nice to know that the plant is happy and it's showing me that it's happy. I also haven't had a lot of crispy um, leaves on this plant and I do water it with tap water so I'm really, um, I just find it very interesting that it hasn't gotten any crispy edges and that's just like I said with tap water. Now I will get crispy leaves if I let this plant dry out too far and so I will get those crispy leaves. But other than that, this plant really doesn't give me any difficulty. I also haven't had any pest issues with this one, so that's another reason why it's my favorite. But yeah, I can never get over the patterning of this plant. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And to think that I almost didn't get this plant because... I don't really know why I almost didn't get this plant, but if you guys watch my channel, you guys know that for a long time... I was just like, yeah, I'm never doing calatheas ever again. Prayer plants are a no-go. Like, I was talking so much crap on prayer plants. And I said that I would uh, do a public apology, you know, once they started growing well for me or if I ever got, got, got the hand of it, the hang of them. But I'm saying, I'm putting out there that I am apologizing to my prayer plants and to the prayer plants of the world because they're not that bad of a plant genus they are just misunderstood and so yeah I'm really enjoying this one I'm enjoying my other prayer plants and I can't wait to see how much bigger it this one's gonna get it does need to be repotted I'm seeing a little bit of root there so pretty soon I'll be bumping this one up into a six inch pot and then we'll really see it take off.
And then the last plant that is on my top five list of this year is my beautiful philodendron fibrosum. And this plant, we have gone back. And so when I first got this plant, I had to rehab it for the longest time. I probably rehabbed this plant for about a year, which is one of my longest rehabs of all time. But I just would not let this plant go down. I wanted to have this plant in my collection because of the fuzzy petioles. I I just I needed this one in my collection. It was all I also wanted to rehab it because I had imported it from Equigenera and it was just not readily available. Like if I didn't get the hang of it, then I would have to import another one or I would have to buy one in the States and it would cost me a lot of money. And so that's why I was trying really hard to get this plant to work for me. And I think it started, I wanna say it started growing for me like last summer was when it really started growing. And let me tell you, when I first started getting this plant to grow, it was hard. I didn't know what this plant wanted from me. Every time the new growth was coming in, it would just shrivel up and it would just die. And I was doing some research, I was looking online and I found that, that this particular plant does not like to dry out for a long period of time. If it does dry out, it will shrivel up, the new growth will shrivel up and you will have to wait for the next point to come out. And so I do keep this plant more on the moist side. And that's what I've been doing with a lot of my furrier philodendrons, a lot of my more like satiny philodendrons. I've been keeping them more moist. And so you can see that I, got, I stuck my moisture meter in here because it is actually time for me to check um, the moisture level. I can also tell by just looking at my soil that it is looking rather dry. And so usually I try to keep this plant at a three. I try really hard not to let it go any lower than that. Of course, with working more, I did miss it, um, miss the watering this time around. But as you can see, the plant is still doing well. And um, the new growth is not brown. It hasn't shriveled up, so I think I should be okay. Um, I haven't waited too long um, before watering this plant. Um, and then if, as you can also tell, I did stake up the plant because it was um, leaning over. It was starting to grow really weird. It, was, it had two stems, but one stem was growing that way and the other stem was growing that way, but they were leaning to the one side. So I just decided to go ahead and stake this plant up so that way it could be supported. And then hopefully I can also get bigger leaves on it. But I just love how the petioles are so thick. They're getting so thick and it just looks like the heffalump. Like it <laughs> reminds me of a heffalump. And it's just like, it's so interesting. Oh, and then the texture is just so, so weird. Like it's soft, but like it's soft, furry, but dense, if that makes sense. And so this is like one of the strangest, interesting plants that I have in my collection. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this plant so much. Like I said, I can't wait till they get bigger. Um, as you can tell, there's nothing like significant about the leaves. Most of the interest is in the back here with the petioles. Although I will say that these leaves are very beautiful. They're very satiny and soft uh, and a little bit velvety too. And then once a new leaf um, comes in, they do have the pink on the back. As you can see there, it was um, it's starting to turn green now. But when the new leaves come in, they do come in pink on the back and then they fade to green like you see here. And then the same thing happens for the, the petioles. They, they start out pink and then they turn to the green. But yeah, like I said, this is just the most interesting plant that I have, a little bit strange. If you're not into furry petioles or if you're a weird like texture person, you probably won't like this plant, but I really enjoy this. And I'm hoping to get my hands on a serpent and a squammy call, but you never know. So that is a philodendron fibrosum. 
I also have like a care video coming up really soon on that plant because I know a lot of people struggle with it and so I'll do that very soon but yeah so those are my top five favorite plants of the year these are the plants that have made me the most happy of you know throughout the whole year they're the most intriguing plants I have in my collection um, and that they have also survived with me missing a couple waterings and you know neglecting them a little bit but yeah these are just the most interesting plants that I have and the most enjoyable plants and so leave me a comment in the comment section below what are your top five favorite plants for the entire year and so I'm really interested to know but as always I just want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos liking and subscribing and I will see you in the next one